Uh, and Mike, I know you're um, quite into your tech. Where do you see sort of VR, AR getting involved in this? And how long is it before we're all sat there with our Oculus Rifts on doing cold calls? Well, I don't know about cold calls, but I mean, it's an interesting idea that, I mean, it, maybe it will happen. Um, I'm attending a networking call tonight where there will be a speaker. I'll be with my little Oculus device, my, my Oculus Quest 2, and, and I'll be sat in around a, a boardroom meeting room uh, with six or seven other colleagues listening to somebody speak. And, and that won't be the first time I've done that either. And I, and I think what we're definitely seeing is with devices like the Oculus Quest 2, which for a few hundred pounds, you can have you know this super high resolution, ultra fast processor, VR, immersive experience with amazing sound and you, know, you name it. And the only technical ability you need to be able to actually engage with that device is the ability to sign into your Facebook account. I mean, literally, I bought the thing, you get it out the box, sign into Facebook, you're in. And so I think, you know, the days where we were tethered to a PC or a device by some massive umbilical thing hanging off of our head with a VR device, which was heavy and uncomfortable, they've gone and it's affordable. So I think it's just really a matter of time before we are seeing more people adopting VR because it's just, it's just so much more accessible now. It's easy. It's fun yeah. as well. It's much better than Zoom. I have to say, I'm looking forward to seeing the guys tonight. <laughs> yeah, so uh, almost having a virtual beer. But um, so Boris said we're, we're going to be allowed out in June with no restrictions, right? And and Phil, uh, I've I've seen you speak many times live, and you fill big big arenas um, when you do talk. And are people going to be flocking back to live face to face conferences? I suppose what's going to be the future of live events and conferences, and how do you sort of see that panning out? Yeah, I think we should skip this year. I mean, I think something might happen in the autumn or I think people will still be a little bit reluctant. Let's look beyond that. Let's look towards uh, next year. Um, what I see already is clients are saying, uh, big, big step this. Phil, we love to see you on the stage and you do your thing and you come and present to our 50, 60 guys, whatever, and we see sales increase, we see more profit, it's great. But after a period of time, usually two or three months, it all dies away and we go back to pretty much where we were. So what's the secret, Phil, to topping up, if you like? Because we can't keep getting all the team over to Milton Keynes, it's too expensive. And I think what many of my clients are saying, we've now found the solution, haven't we? We still do the live thing, but perhaps for 45 minutes every three months, you do a video thing before the guys all go to work. They can watch it in the car. They can watch it at home, etc. So I think just like when the fax machine came in, we thought, well, there's no need to meet people face to face anymore. When the telephone was invented, they probably said we don't need to meet face to face anymore. When radio came in, commercial radio, oh, that's the death of TV and radio. No, it just finds its place. And I think we will go back to live events because there's nothing beats shaking someone's hand and having a beer and the live thing. No, nothing beats that. But this Zoom era will continue and it will find its place naturally. That's what I think. This will become part of the future. And, and Tiff, you've done lots of cool things with holograms and, and different things. How do you sort of see it? Are we going to be going into a hybrid area, era where maybe we go to ad tech and there's it's you buy your ticket and you have a virtual ticket and a live ticket or a combined ticket. How, how do you see this shaping up? Yes, thank you. It's something we've been looking at very closely while we've been delivering uh, virtual events and moving into hybrid. So um, as you say, we had the great fortune to be able to work with um, holographic technology this year to be able to live cast a live singer who duetted with uh, someone who was in a, a separate studio and then could interact with the audience. I mean, you know, taking on from, you know, as Mike was saying about VR, there's some really immersive um, interactive technology that is coming to the fore um, that is already here and has been used for a number of years, certainly. And now we're looking at what is the application that brings it out more into the day-to-day. -day. So what we've experienced um, certainly in the last year is that our clients are telling us that they, they will never go back to a fully live event without the hybrid element because of the global reach, because of the accessibility of immediate instant on demand video for the people who want to skip back because they miss the morning sessions uh, to be able to do that. So I certainly always see that 
people are craving, of course, that that face to face connection, the serendipity of uh, bumping into people in a uh, in a not what we call a live environment, but a face to face environment, because online, of course, is still live. Uh, but equally, there's a technology now that allows you to mingle um, in uh, in the same rooms, so not just the Zoom calls that are prevalent. And we'll see a lot of this, um, you know, technology accelerate over the next year, where we can be all in the same spaces and have those serendipity of conversations too, if that helps.